part two of the Easter clean out. So um, let's wait with this. This was where we left off at part one. Um, I have the box. The last box is down here. And uh, I just want to pick stuff up. I don't think there's anything in here of any value, but more or less. So um, power supply. This is a regular XT power supply, and I can see there's one more power supply. Um, yeah, well, it's a bit dusty, but it's fine. Um, let's just try and hook them up and uh, turn them on. Um, we need to uh, figure out how to turn them on because uh, in order for a power supply, 80 power supply or ATX power supply, we need to bridge two of the connectors. So let me just briefly find a thingy. I usually just use a clip or something to bridge two and uh, then we'll turn them on and see. So uh, let's try that first. So, um, how do you turn on an ATX power supply? You cannot just hook it into power and then expect it just to run, as in the good old days. No, you need to activate it. So there's actually a power on cable that needs to be bridged and it's more or less always the green one. And um, if you are in doubt, let me try and hopefully you will be able to see what I mean. If you find this notch, and then you go from number four and number five. So the green one in this case, which is usually is, and a ground, which is black. If you hardwire these two, you actually turn on the power supply. Let me get it out there. So um, number four and number five from this side where you have the clip. And on the other power supply, it's completely the same. I can see the green wire is here and it's stripped down, so it's difficult to see, but there's a black ground wire there. So it's also number four, number five. So um, what I usually do, I find a clip. I can't find mine. Um, I found another one. So um, this is usually what I do. And uh, I just need to clip them off like this. And if I hardwire one, two, three, four, and five, like this, then we should be good to go. We always need to measure it. So I found the broken hard disk. This has been a companion for a while now. Um, it's just to, not because I need some load, just to see if I get some power out. This will take the 12 volt rail and obviously also the 5 volt rail for the PCB but the 12 volt is actually driving the motor so that will spin up if it works. Um, I'll find a voltmeter and we can just test the 12 volt, sorry, the 5 volt rail also. Um, can just do it on here and that should be the yellow one, no sorry, that should be the white one. And like this. Uh, so all we need is power in the back. And let's just see, where did it go? I lost my clip, it fell out. Just like that. And some power. And with a little bit of luck, it works. Let's see. Nothing. Oh, well, it turned on, sorry. It just took a little bit while. So this is spinning up. This is giving me five volts. Everything is working. So this power supply is actually working. So let's um, test the next power supply. And, uh, with this little bit sketchy setup, we should be ready again. So it's, it is wired in here. Something for the hard disk, something for five volt rail. Let's try and see.
absolutely nothing that so um, let's just ignore this one so this goes to e-waste with all the other weird stuff so one good power supply and one bad one so um, let's move on Next item in the box, and I think from now on it's going to go very fast. Um, wow. Something called LG. And I think when I look in the box, I find a, a yeah, well. So um, what is this? Um, crap, uh, for once. This is from LG. What it does is a TV media center where you can, via the HDMI, you can hook it up to your television, you can have some network on it. Um, and usually, in this case over here, you have two USB, USB so you can um, cast some videos to your television. So it kind of like, and it has some ups and downs and left and rights and whatever you want it to. Um, I see a thingy. Remote control, uh, wow. Not uh, When you buy a new television, all this is already built in, so it goes out to e-waste. Next, this is actually a nice item. And I think, because there's so much weird stuff down here. Yeah, that's the second one. Um, so in your cabinet, you could, um, install these and then you have different kinds of SD card and compact flash cards and other cards in this case you even have USB. Um, so it's very nice to have in a computer. I, um, it, your motherboard needs to support it um, and I had no use for it so e waste again. Some sort of, I don't know what kind of PC wireless gaming receiver, uh, e waste. And here's another th weird thing. Um, yeah, well, I don't know what to say. So there's a sound that goes out and in, maybe a reset button, and here's some USBs, and they're all connected to a cable, which also can be hooked in in front of your cabinets. Um, it needs a frame to make it pretty, but uh, no, out e-waste. Three CD-ROM drives, um, kind of like all the same, although there are different kinds of brands. This is HP, for instance. I don't know the other ones, don't recognize HL Data Store, but it's, it's the same thing um, with the same connector. These are for laptops, so CD-ROM or DVD drives I have no use for them, so they go to EUAs too. Uh, found a battery to a um, Samsung, I don't have a Samsung laptop, so e-waste. Uh, what do we have here? I think maybe, let's park this one, because when we saw the LG, the Dream, the Dreamcast or whatever it's called, this is kind of like the same theme. Sorry, here's the LG. So you hook this to your television and with a remote control, which I also now found, you can then have USB hard disks to it or Ethernet. This is where you connect to your television and then you have videos on a USB stick or connect to an external drive and then you can cast all that to your television. Again, it's in your television now. E-waste. There's a lot of e-waste here in this bucket. Um, Oh yeah, um, so these are trend nets. So these are USB Ethernet dongles. So you put them in your laptop, um, um, computer, PC, whatever, that doesn't have a um, network a card in it, and then you all of a sudden have network. E-waste. <laughs> Two um, Imon remote controls. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm not, yeah, out. Uh, this one, which maybe I need to explain. So if anybody is a gamer here, this should be the logo for Steam. This is actually um, where you can hook it 
uh, let me just start by saying I'm not a gamer, so I don't know much about it. Um, so you hook this item up to uh, the internet and to a television, and then you can actually stream games onto your television from Steam. Um, maybe this could have a value for YouTube, I know. So I'll pack this over there. Um, there we go, this is the match, there we go. So these belong together, and uh, obviously this is something you put in front of your cabinet. There's a dial thingy here, and I'm not gonna say anything about how this is wired up. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Kind of like a media center where you can control loads of stuff in within your computer with a remote control. So you could act park your desktop computer under your television, for instance, uh, f five meters away from you, and then you, with the remote control, can just, yeah, remote control your PC somehow. Out. What do we have here? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, if you have two PCs, um, these are USB. So if you have two PCs, you can connect them via this one to one monitor. And with this clicker, you can switch from one PC to another. Um, the television sets usually have two or more inputs, so out to e-waste. Um, this one, and this is actually the last item in the box. CPU cooler, um, again, we had a whole box with this, um, yeah, e-waste. So, let me <laughs> see if I can move something away. Um, the last item I hooked up to park is um, this one. This is an item from Sound Blaster, SBX Pro Studio. What this does, it hooks to your computer, and then you can, if you have a sound system, uh, with five speakers, so it's 5.1. You can have left and right uh, speakers, you have the rear speaker, and you have your subwoofer here. They go all out. This becomes then the um, 5.1 sound. And with this, you can control it from your PC. So you hook this into your PC, and all the sound goes out. And I'm assuming this is a volume control for all of that. You can also have a few inputs here. So you can have, um, well, this is then an output. This is um, headphones, but you have a line in and a microphone in. Um, I'm not sure if I want, no, goes to e-waste. I'm keeping too much. That's actually a remote control to it. So all this goes to e-waste. Let's have a look at the two uh, laptops. Let's take this one away first and let's uh, have a look at this one. This is a Fujitsu Siemens Lifebook. And if I look in the back, it says Lifebook E8020. Um, this is Windows XP Professional Fujitsu Siemens Computer License thingy. Uh, briefly looking through it, so we have two of the PCMCIA or something slots. I can't remember the name actually. Uh, ooh, this I think is a modem. This is serial, parallel, VGA. This is PS2, so you can. Um, have a splitter so you can have a mouse and a keyboard. I can see three USBs. They are most likely 1.1, 1.2. If you're lucky, 2.0, don't think so. And an ethernet connector, something for locking it. On this side, some power in. Uh, the icon up here is weird. This, I think it's USB. And this is a PS2 again with the mouse icon, so what is this? This looks different from this, don't know. Uh, is this Firewire? And here we have an SD card slot, very nice, and a DVD player. And in the front, you can obviously turn on and off the wireless. There is a headphone out, microphone in, and that is kind of like it. Um, and if we open it briefly up, I'm not sure you can see it, but there we go. 
Um, yeah, well, it's a keyboard. Well, well it's, it's, it's a laptop. So let's um, find some power. Uh, with the two, in the box, there were two power bricks. Um, hold on a second. There must be something in the back stating the power. And over here says 19 volts. Um, so, and it's, I have no idea. This one power supply from Trust is um, where you can adjust it. Actually very cute. Um, so it goes from 12 volt up to 22 and it's set to 19. Mm, almost think it's for this one. Um, the other power supply uh, center positive is 15 or 16 or 18.5, 19 or 19 and a half. So this will adjust itself for whatever it needs. Um, so let's try with the pretty one. See if it fits in on the side. It does not, it's not that one. Maybe it's for the other. So let's try this one. Wow, very sketchy, but uh, I think that is working. So um, let me find some power. Let's take this away and let's um, see how the, if the power supply is actually giving out what needs to be giving out. So let's test that. It was center positive. So let's um, see if we're getting the right voltage. Wow, cable, spaghetti. There we go. So center positive, so inside it goes. Some power to it and let's... Um, it's stating 1927. And if I move it in, you can also see. So, yeah, so that power supply is good. Let's um, turn on the laptop and see what happens, all right? So if I put it in the laptop, on the side, and uh, let's open it up and see. Turning it on. I hear stuff. I see blinking, st oh, wow. And it. Okay, you should charge your battery or switch the outlet power immediately to keep from losing your work, it says. Uh, don't know. So, uh, okay. <laughs> Cute. Uh, it, it's working. Um, nice. Uh, so, there's a laptop from Fujitsu Siemens. Um, cute. Uh, yeah. Let's take the next one. So if we take this, which was center positive also, and uh, there's a green light. So again, center positive. And I need to bring this in the shot. And 16 and a half, should be fine. There's no load, so it regulates itself, this one. So this is the in-between, I'm assuming. And if we look at the at and let me just unhook the power first. And uh, let's have a brief look at this one. So this is at and t and um, at and t actually means something to me. Um, due to the fact that I'm collecting Olivetti computers, as you must know by now. Um, and um, when Olivetti started the PC line, they actually um, licensed the Olivetti M24 out in a joint venture with AT&T, and AT&T actually bought some of Olivetti, uh, the company. I can't remember how much they owned of Olivetti. Um, and, um, Olivetti and AT&T in the States came out with the Olivetti M24, rebranded it and put up another color scheme. Um, and it was called AT&T PC 6300. 
Um, so um, AT&T actually means something to me. Um, let's uh, have a brief walk around. So I see a floppy disk drive here, three and a half, must be 1.44. I see a LED here. So this is also for PCMCI cards. There are two slots in here. It's, it's a little bit dusty in there. And on the back, I see a computer. This must be docking station. Yes, it is. So this is if you had a docking station and you can hook this up to the docking station. Here we have the um, power connector that is uh, center positive. And if I take this plug and plug it in, it fits. So I must assume this works for this one. This is a PS2 keyboard. There's another LED here. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so parallel, serial, and VGA. And there is a headphone and a microphone. I think I can rip something out. Oh, I can. This is a hard drive. So this is 351 megabytes. Um, yeah, I think it says cylinder 682, heads 16, S63. There we go. Um, I don't know the brand. I think it says Toshiba up there. This must be a battery and there's a hinge here. Yeah, so when I did that, it moved out a bit. So hopefully it's not leaking anywhere. It's not leaking anywhere at all. So the battery is perfect. Um, does it say anything? It says 9.6 volt. And that brings us to the front. Let's just briefly go on the bottom, here we have the actual model number, AT&T Global Ust or Global List 200S. There we go. So uh, let's hook some power to it and see if this one works. That was in the back. And um, open it up. Wow, the, this one is very loose. So maybe it doesn't work anymore. There's a trackball. Oh, I see now a light down here. So it's maybe charging, I don't know. So there's a trackball and one big on and off button with some brightness control up here on the screen. So it's most likely not a um, color monitor. Let's turn it on. I'm hearing this hard disk is spinning. Two beeps and the CD-ROM, oh, sorry, the floppy disk drive, but there's absolutely nothing on the screen. So, um, bummer. That would have been a cute laptop if this was working. Let me uh, turn it off. And um, let's hook a monitor to it. Maybe that will work. I have tested the monitor just so we are aware of that. Um, so um, let's let's try. I'm um, I'm not sure if. We okay, I lost the um, mic once again. Um, they don't last very long. The power in these. So um, there we go. Let me um, try to put the power back again, and um, I hooked it to the monitor. And uh, let's turn it on. Let me just see if. We can have everything in the shot. I think so, right? Isn't it? Yeah, it's fine. Let's uh, turn it on and um, see what happens. So it spins up. Obviously nothing will happen over here. So the question is more, is anything going to happen on the screen? No, it's not. Um, on the key. But I see a CIT LCD, so maybe I should uh, press FN and this one. Maybe that will work. Doesn't seem to. Let me check the monitor just to see if it wants to go to sleep. Um, so hold on a second. Let's go to VGA and press OK and press. 
that key, absolutely no, nothing is working. So um, I would say that the graphics card in this is broken. So um, yeah, that's that. I would really have loved to have had this up and running. Um, maybe we can have a look at it in the future, um, open it up and see if it actually will work. Because I can hear it says beep and it's trying to boot from the floppy disk drive and I can hear the hard disk is spinning. So it seems the only thing that's not working here is kind of like the um, video card in it, but it's all integrated in one board. So it's gonna be nightmare to fix, but maybe we will have to bring it forward eventually. So that's uh, the two laptops. Let's uh, continue. Okay, I'm on handheld and the mic is still not working. But when I looked at the computer, the video that I just recorded and I did this, I actually noticed something on the screen. And let me, uh, let me put in the power again. Hold on a second, it's in the back. And let me turn it on, it's working. You see, all of a sudden, I don't know what happened, but it is working. Nice, what does it say? Invalid configuration information, please run setup program, press F1 to continue, F2 to run the setup utility. Let's try F2 down here. Wow, CMOS battery. The screen is really bad, it's really, really bad. Um, CMOS battery, RAM lost power, all CMOS defaults were loaded. Standard CMOS checkbox invalid. Extended CMOS checkbox invalid. Hit any key. Um, wow. There we go. Uh, cute. It's working. I'm happy. Um, uh, enter. Auto disable, auto configure. Maybe that's the best thing. Um, I don't know what to say. Let's, uh, let's, how do I save? Uh, escape, maybe? Continue, save value and exit, F4. Rebooting. Intel 486, DX475. It's starting. It's freaking starting. Yay! And it has Windows 3.11 on it. Oh, that is so cute. I'm so happy. This is, oh, okay. Uh, damn, look. What is this down there? So some of the pixels are not working and it is a color monitor. Freaking awesome. So happy. Okay. Um, now we can continue. Well, we're not continuing to the next, but I just want to say I, I pressed the function key and the um, LCD and look, the external monitor is also working. Just wanted to show you that. Awesome. I think we're gonna um, end with the motherboard just like last time, right? Um, again, this is a modern, motherboard um this is called and i'm not sure we can see it but it's k7 t turbo version 3 and it's from uh, microstar it's also known as the microstar 6330 i think and um, pci and something i have no idea of and something i have no idea of um you can look it up if you want to i uh, it's not my thing, so there we go. Uh, what I can see is that the CPU is under socket A. So this is most likely an AMD CPU of some sorts. So what do we need? We need some memory. So I need to figure out if I have any memory at all. And uh, we had the um, ATX power supply from just before that we just tested, so I should be able to hook the power supply up. So let me just uh, find some memory, hook stuff up, 
connect down here and let me just show you again. So down here I can see I can there's a power switch here that turns on so I'll hook the power switch on it and on this side over there I can hook a speaker to it although I would say this should be a speaker anyway but nevertheless let me just hook everything up and wire to a monitor over there and then let's test it. So it looks a little bit sketchy but um, I hooked everything up and um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm old. That's my excuse. I'm going to use forever and ever. This is AGP port and this is for graphics video card. This one, let me uh, just for... Oh, there we go. So this port is that kind of connection. So uh, let's put in the graphics card. This is one of the graphics cards that we found or had in the box in the previous series why can't i put it in now what what's happening it needs to go out here oh sorry yeah i almost broke this needs to go in there we go sorry and now it should be able to go in plug in the monitor i'll adjust the monitor once we see if it actually runs i hooked up um, power led um, on and off button uh, the speaker and the reset just for the fun of it Power's up here. PS2 keyboard is way over here. Just so, oh, sorry, I, uh, oh, everything's fine. So, um, looks sketchy, but I will now turn on the power and we'll see. And um, maybe hear something, I don't know. Maybe the RAM doesn't work. Maybe the graphics card doesn't work or maybe the CPU up here doesn't work. Oh, it starts without me even having to turn it on. That's weird. But there is a green light. I heard a beep. Okay, I see for you to Siemens computer. What? Why is the buyer saying for you to Siemens? Verifying DMA pool data. So this, okay. Um, I don't know what to say. It's working. Well, that's uh, good, fine. But why did it say for you to Siemens? Okay, but now saying disk boot failure, insert system disk and press enter. Um, but that doesn't matter. So, it's working. Um, I have the other graphics card with also AGP uh, connector. So let's just see if this actually also works so I can test that one too. So, I'm, 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 I don't understand why the power supply uh, the, the board is just turning on immediately, not even with this. Um, let's let's just just for the fun of it, take the power button out, All right? So um, that's out because it shouldn't be turned on like that. There we go. Out goes this one. In goes the next one, which is an Asus. And it goes down here. Let's try again. And again, it turns on without me pressing any button. That is crazy. You see? Breach to Siemens. I don't understand why it's doing that. But uh, this graphics card works also perfectly for now. So I think um, the two graphics cards are good. The motherboard is fine. The RAM stick is fine, CPU, everything. Um, the only thing that I don't understand is why does this turn on without me turning it on with the ATX power supply. But nevertheless, doesn't matter. Let's um, put this together again and um, let's wrap everything up. Well, that was that Easter 2023 and the Easter cleanup. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I just need to clean up from time to time and organize, reorganize and structure and put labels and stuff. Um, so uh, I just wanted you to have um, the journey together with me, so to say. But there we go. I hope you enjoyed these two episodes. Um, I just thought I would turn on the camera and walk you through what I have 
in my pile of stuff that needed to go either to e-waste or further on to other YouTuber or other collectors who want to have some of the stuff. Um, I think the one that I am really happy to have is the AT&T laptop. Um, it's, it was an 8084 uh, DX4 running at 75 megahertz, I think. Um, have no usage for it, but it, 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 it tells a story because it's thick and, yeah, can't call it a laptop, right? It, it's, it's also a little bit heavy, but it's cute and it has history with me and my Olivetti computers. So I'm gonna keep this at least for now. Uh, everything else needs to go, uh, not the sound card. That one is already put in anti-stack uh, bag and organized into the box labeled uh, sound cards, obviously. Um, but besides that, everything else goes. Um, so I uh, will wait a little bit and see if there are anybody who wants to contact me here via YouTube and then you can come and pick stuff up. If not, I will, um, when I get the time, I'm not promising anything yet, uh, I will then eventually uh, start posting it on either Facebook market, uh, eBay or something. I'll post them in for a low value. And no matter what value it is, everything will go to some sort of, I don't know, a course of some sort. Not going to me, but I will send the money to something else to make uh, use it somewhere else. I haven't decided. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm not promising I'm doing it tomorrow or within the next month, but eventually. So if nobody picks stuff up, everything will go online and I will put... Uh, a few euros, dollars, pounds on the items and everything will then move further to a good organization of some sort of. But yeah, cool. Um, obviously this laptop also goes. I actually have more stuff that I haven't even walked through because there's so much still, uh, but um, nevertheless. I've been talking a lot. It's been going on for a while, so we need to make you know, so uh, thank you for now. You know, please do the thumbs up and please do subscribe. Hope to see you soon and uh, write some comments. Let me know what you think of uh, not me doing Easter cleanup, but that I'm videoing it. Does it even make sense for any of you out there watching this? Or is it uh, good stuff to watch on uh, Easter, right? Bye for now and uh, see you soon.